All right, y'all, we're out here in these, so cut some of these planted pines down. These, they're getting bigger, they're, you know, 16, 18 inch trees, some of them 20, 22, you know, something like that. But I'm trying to get these things out, but you know, while it's still cold, you know, cool weather oh, down here in South Alabama before the pine beetles, you know, come out of hibernation. Because when you start leaving these tops, you know, cutting, scratching these trees up and stuff like this down here, you know, it's just like a magnet. These pine beetles, they just start, they drawn to it. So, uh, and you don't want to get them started because then you, you know, you have to, you have to keep an eye on all these, you know, all these pines anyway. So, but, but you know, when you cut them in the summertime, it just makes it that much worse. Anyway, I got a tree that's leaning this way a little bit. Hopefully I won't drop it on the phone. I've got it baited on the back side. I'll show you in just a minute. Oh, but I'm fixing to cut this bad boy down and get the lull and get it out of here. I've got a, a ramp full of logs so far and uh, it's been hard at it trying to get some of this stuff done. It's right here at the end of deer season and uh, our deer season goes out the 10th of February and uh, we got a freezer full of meat so i've about give it up on the deer hunting for this year anyway let's get this thing cut and get it out of here All right, sorry about that, y'all. I got a phone call right in the middle of the video, and it just cut me off. But anyway, what I did, what I was going to tell you, is on the back side of that tree, you know, I, I cut a wedge on that back side, you know, just a, over halfway of the, you know, the log to, uh, just to make it go that way. You can hinge it. If, if it's not, if it's leaning against, you know, a direction you don't want it to go in, you can, you can, you can cut on one side and you can hinge it around and then you can cut it on the back side and hinge it around. You know, you can do a whole lot of stuff with a chainsaw, but I ain't going to get into all that. Right now, we're just going to get this thing cut. We're going to get it cut into lengths. I'm going to get the log, get it out of here, and I'll get it loaded on the ramp. We're going to try to cut it up with a sawmill. that a beautiful sight right there did y'all see me hang those three logs up on that little sapling tree it just drug them right off of the forks i had to stop and regroup 16s right here and the top cuts off of these trees were a lot of these were 12s right here smaller trees i just cut them into 12s because i'm trying to get two by tens you know at least two by tens maybe two by eights i may have to i may have to go with two by eights on some of these right here especially that one down there at the bottom but i'm trying to regroup because let me tell you we use almost everything i had 16 feet long on uh, on that kansas that kansas cabin those right there like i said are going to be the 12s that's the most versatile length that i know of to me that's the one that i use most of oh siding one by eights one by 12s one by tens i've already got a bunch of those cut y'all can see this bunch of one by eights over there i got some two by tens cut too you know that are cut and dried and ready to go Oh, got some more down here at the house and another shed. Trying to keep this stuff stocked up before the, you know, get everything cut that I want to cut before the sap rises and the and the pine beetles, you know, come out of hibernation and start, you know. Because let me tell you, they will walk through these trees. And the only way to get rid of them is to cut that tree down or start spraying. You know, and if you cut, 
it's like uh, it's like ringing the dinner bell when you start cutting and dragging and skinning those trees and they start bleeding it's it's seriously because when i'm cutting these trees in the summertime right here they're landing all over me because they smell that stuff and they're just drawn to it anyway in this in the spring of the year when i made that cut right there that was just glaze over with sap so this this should dry out better, make better uh, lumber this time of the year because it's going to be drier than if it would if I cut it in June or something when the humidity really gets jacked up. We got that 30% chance of rain every day and it just doesn't, it just doesn't dry as good. It, it, it ends up moldy and I don't want that. I want the wood to be uh, pretty and blonde when it's done. So two buys on, I'm going to cut these into two buys, probably two by sixes and two baits because they are smaller logs. Two by tens, oh, two by eights and two by tens on these 16 footers right here. Got a small log on the mill. That's the one I'm gonna cut. I'm fixing to do that in just a minute. I was gonna show you all this right here. Got some live edge. This is what I'm gonna do the countertops with in Kansas. I know you can't see it right now, but uh, I promise you, it is gonna be beautiful. It's blue. I, I found a tree that had been uh, dead. I've been looking at it all deer season long. A couple of trees in there that were dead. And uh, I just cut them into two inch thick and left them live edge. You see the edge right there and dry them out. And I do the countertops in uh, Kansas. They're going to turn out really good, I think. Beautiful. So let's get this bad boy done right here. Let me quit talking and start working. Y'all hang in there. We fixing to cut some wood. All right, folks, got a little minor setback right here. I busted the throttle cable. Oh, uh, when I pull this motor down, it's busted that that linkage that goes from there to the throttle, which engages, you know, which kicks the motor up in RPMs. Anyway, I won't have to work on that a little bit. Oh, uh, but I'll be right back at it in just a minute. Get y'all back on fast motion. But anytime you deal with uh, with something, you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to mechanic. That's just the way it is. So uh, give me a few minutes. Let me get this bad boy uh, fired back up and we'll get back to cutting. All right, real quick before I get started again, I'm just gonna show you all I did was replace that wire right there. I used a piece of copper wire, a piece of 12 2 uh, just electrical wire. And uh, just to replace that right there, let's see if it's gonna work. I tell you what, that little 12-2 copper wire throttle cable better pack a lunch. You got a long way to go. We'll have to hold on tight. Worked out good, though. Uh, got uh, two 2 by 6s and four 2 by 8s out of that uh, one log. That's a true 2 inches thick, 6 inches wide, 2 inches thick, 8 inches wide instead of being an inch and a half by 7 and a half or inch and a half by 5 and a half. Those are true 2 buys. Anyway, I couldn't imagine having to buy materials right now. The cost of building materials is just through the roof right now. And uh, I'm lucky enough to, to have the to have the trees, which are right there, the, the, the land and the trees to, to be able to cut my own, cut my own to know what I'm using. Oh, and being able to cull stuff that I normally, if I had to buy, you know, if I bought it, I'd have to use it, you know, whatever I got because it'd be the expense. But uh, with this machine, I can, I can, take coal stuff and, and cut it down and make either you know i can make uh, two by sixes out of two by eights if they're if they're that 
it's crooked, I can straight line or whatever I need to do to, to, to take something that was too warped to use and I'll turn it into something else. Anyway, got a long way to go. Hope y'all enjoyed the video and uh, hey, y'all be safe. Appreciate y'all.